Let's go through a few examples of graphing linear inequalities in one variable on a number line. To graph an inequality means to graph its solutions, which are the numbers that make it true, the numbers that satisfy the inequality. For example, this first one is 3t minus 4 is less than or equal to 20. If we picked t equal to 100, do you think that's a solution to the inequality? My gut feeling would be no. 3 times 100 minus 4, that's going to be way bigger than 20. So it's not going to satisfy this inequality. The numbers that do satisfy the inequality, those are the solutions. So what we're trying to do is figure out what the solutions to this linear inequality in one variable are, and then graph those solutions on a number line. In a previous lesson, we went over just solving these sorts of inequalities. We didn't worry about graphing them. So I'm gonna go through the solving part a little bit more quickly today. If you need more details about how to do that, if you're a little lost, then check out the link in the description to that previous lesson where we just focus on the algebra involved in solving the inequalities. We'll go through solving today, but we're gonna focus on the graphing. So let's go ahead and solve this inequality. Feel free to give all of these a try yourself before watching the video about it. So here's 3t minus 4 is less than or equal to 20. In order to solve for t, well we've got this minus 4, we're trying to get t by itself so that we can figure out what values of t will satisfy the inequality. So let's add 4 to both sides to get rid of that minus 4. Then on the left we'll have 3t, on the right we'll have 20 plus 4, that is 24. Now t is getting multiplied by 3. So all we've got to do is divide both sides of the inequality by 3 and we have that t is less than or equal to 8. This means all real numbers less than or equal to 8 will satisfy this inequality. If we plug a number in that satisfies this, let's pick one, say t equals 3. That will work because it's less than or equal to 8. If you plug that into this inequality, what do we get? We get 3 times 3, which is 9, minus 4, which is 5, which is indeed less than or equal to 20. It works. If we pick a number that is greater than 8, that doesn't satisfy this inequality, it will not be a solution. So when we plug it into our original inequality, it won't be a true statement. Earlier we said let's try t equals 100. Of course that didn't work, it's greater than 8. So we can be positive that will not work. All right, now let's graph these solutions, all real numbers less than or equal to 8, on a number line. First, we've got to draw a line, hence the name number line. Yours doesn't have to be perfectly straight, mine is, thanks to the power of technology. Now, we'll put arrowheads on either side of the line because it goes to positive infinity and to negative infinity. It includes all real numbers. Now, since we're trying to graph the numbers that are less than or equal to 8, eight's important. We've got to make sure that 8 is on our number line. 8 is a little big, so I'm going to put 0 on our number line a little bit off to the left to make sure that we've got room over here to count up to 8. Remember, the number line just contains all real numbers, and when we label numbers, that's just kind of specifying what part of the number line we're looking at. And this will be important to pick correctly so that you're able to graph what you're trying to graph. Since we're trying to graph all real numbers less than or equal to 8, I want to make sure that we have room on the line to get to 8. I'm going to go up by units of 2. So here I'll say this is 2, this is 4, this is 6, and this is 8. Just barely have room. And then we don't need to label the negative numbers, but I think it's pretty good form to do that. It looks kind of bad if you know, the negative numbers are just unlabeled. So we'll label a couple of those too. Over here, we'll say that's negative 2, and there's negative 4. And the scale's a little bit off, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do your best. So here's our 8. We want to graph all numbers that are less than or equal to 8. The way we do that is, well, here's the first question. 
can t equal 8? The answer is yes, t is less than or equal to 8. So it can equal 8, which means step 1 is we're going to just draw a point or a dot there at 8. We're shading it in, it's just a, you know, shaded in circle saying 8 is a solution to the inequality. Now, the other numbers we need to graph, which basically means we're going to shade them in, are the numbers that are less than 8. We've got 8, now we just need all the numbers that are less than 8. In order to do that, we just draw a line right down the number line. We're shading in all those numbers that are less than 8 and pop an arrowhead at the end to indicate that you're including all those numbers. Well, I should point in this direction because that's the negative direction from your perspective. We're including all numbers that are less than 8 and the shaded in dot tells us that we're including 8 as well. Now, if you don't have multiple colors at your disposal, if you're using just pencil and paper and you don't really have a good way of shading on the number line when you've already drawn it, I would just recommend doing what we just did, but just put it a little bit above the number line. So if I was in that situation, I'd put a little dot right above eight, and then I'd draw my arrow off to the left, off in the negative direction, indicating that I'm also going to include all those numbers that are less than eight. Clearly what we've just graphed is this inequality, t is less than or equal to eight, but we would also say that it's the graph of this inequality because the numbers that make these inequalities true are the same and those are the numbers that we've shaded in. So that's the graph of both of these inequalities. They are equivalent inequalities. If t satisfies this, it will satisfy this. And if t satisfies this, then it will satisfy this. All right, on to the next exercise. Here we've got 5y plus one is greater than or equal to 16. Again, we've got to begin by solving the inequality we want to get y by itself. So let's subtract one from both sides. Minus one, minus one. On the left, we'll have five y, and on the right, we'll have 16 minus one, which is 15. Y is getting multiplied by five, so to finish things off, we'll divide both sides by five, and we get that y is greater than or equal to three. So all real numbers that are at least three will satisfy this inequality. In order to graph the inequality, we've got to graph the numbers that make it true on the number line. The numbers that make it true are the numbers that are at least three. Sorry, my highlighter color makes that hard to read. Y is greater than or equal to three. So let's do it. Let's draw our number line. Again, it's just a line with arrowheads on either side to indicate that it includes all the real numbers up or down to negative infinity and up to positive infinity. Now three is pretty small, so I can just plot my zero kind of here in the middle. I don't have to worry too much about making room for it because it's small. We can go up by single units. There's one, there's two, and there is three. And then off to the left, there's negative one, there's negative two, and can just barely fit negative three in like that. And remember, you can pick the units you're using on your number line. Last time we went up by units of two. It's up to you to sort of zoom in to the right spot of the number line so that we can see what we need to see. If we had that y was greater than or equal to 12, then I would have labeled this differently. Perhaps I would have gone up by units of four. That would have been easy. I could go to four, then eight, then 12, and then I'd have to relabel these numbers in the negative direction as well because I've adjusted the scale, I've adjusted the units. But let's go back to what we actually have, which is y is greater than or equal to three. Again, we asked the question, can y equal three? Yes, it can. Y can be greater than or equal to three. So I'm gonna just draw a point here at three on the number line, a solid shaded in point. Besides three, the other solutions are all the numbers that are greater than three. So now I'm just going to draw a line in the positive direction to the right and put an arrowhead on it to indicate that all of those numbers that are greater than three also satisfy the inequality. We have now graphed or shaded in all numbers greater than or equal to three.
You can also see here that it probably would have been a good idea to make the numbers a little closer together because we just barely have room to show that arrow at the end of our number line indicating that we're including all the numbers greater than three as well but this works you know we can see what's going on we've shaded three and all numbers greater than three so in total we've shaded all numbers greater than or equal to three those are the solutions to this inequality so that's how we graph it all right on to the next example i'll write in uh, let's say this dark purple color here we have that 12 minus 2x is greater than negative 8. We could go about this a couple ways. We could subtract 12 from both sides, or we could add 2x to both sides. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides so that we get to see an example of dividing by a negative. Once we subtract 12 from both sides, on the left we just have negative 2x. On the right, we have negative 8 minus 12, which is negative 20. Now, x is getting multiplied by negative 2. So to finish solving for x, we'll just divide both sides of the inequality by negative 2. So now we'll have x on the left. On the right, negative 20 divided by negative 2 is positive 10. Now that we divided by a negative number, we've got to remember to reverse the inequality. We did have greater than, now we have less than. Remember, when you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, you've got to reverse the inequality. So, in order to graph this inequality, the numbers that satisfy it, we need to graph all numbers that are less than 10. So let's go ahead and draw a number line. Again, we just draw a line, arrow heads on either side. Now, 10 is kind of big, so I'm going to put zero maybe right here so that I've got plenty of room in the positive direction to get up to 10. And I'm going to count up by units of two again. So this will be two, this will be four, this will be six, this will be eight, and there is 10, just able to fit it. And there's 12, go in the negative direction, really just have room for a negative two. Really, it's it's more like right there, there's negative two. All right, so now we want to shade in all numbers less than 10. Again, we ask, can x equal 10? In this case, no, x needs to be less than 10. So instead of shading in a point at 10, we're just going to draw an open circle. That tells us that what we're about to draw starts at 10, but it doesn't include 10. So what we have to draw or shade in now are all the numbers that are less than 10. We do this in the same way we've been doing. Just draw an arrow in the negative direction, shading in all those numbers that are less than 10. And put an arrowhead at the end to indicate that we are including all of those numbers that are less than 10, every last one of them. And again, that open circle at 10 indicates, hey, this shading is starting at 10, but we're not actually including 10. Try plugging 10 into this inequality. Will it make it true? It shouldn't, based on the work we did. Let's try it. It would be 12 minus 2 times x, we're taking x equal to 10 to see if it works, is greater than negative 8. That means that 12 minus 20 is greater than negative 8. 12 minus 20 is negative 8. And that's not greater than negative 8. So we see that x does not satisfy, or excuse me, we see that 10 does not satisfy the inequality, just as we would suspect. The only numbers that satisfy the inequality are the ones that are less than 10. All right, on to the last example. 9c minus 6 is greater than 30. We'll go for red this time. All right, we've got to get c by itself. Got this minus 6, so let's add 6 to both sides then 9c is greater than 36. Divide both sides by nine, so we have that c is greater than 36 over nine. You know your mental multiplication, your mental division, that's four. So we've got c is greater than four. That's not bad, four is a pretty small number, so we can work with that. Draw our number line. If you haven't yet, now's a great time to try to graph this yourself. Graph all the real numbers on the number line that are greater than four. Again, four is pretty small, so 
don't have to worry too much about where I put zero. I'll just put it right there and go up by units of one. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and barely have room for five right there. Put a couple numbers in the negative direction, negative one, negative two, and negative three. My scale's a little bit awkward, you know, some of these distances are not really equal, but again, it's just a sketch, you do your best. All right, now we've got to shade in all the numbers that are greater than four. Again, we ask, can C equal four? No, it can't. Numbers that are equal to four or smaller are not gonna satisfy this inequality. The only numbers that are gonna satisfy it, the solutions, are the numbers that are greater than four. So at four, we put that open circle, indicating that our shading is kind of starting at four, but it doesn't include four. Now we've got to shade in all the numbers that are greater than four, so we shade in the positive direction, where the bigger numbers are. So we'll draw this line off to the right, and put an arrowhead at the end to indicate we're including all of those numbers in the positive direction, all of those numbers that are greater than four. And that's some recap on solving linear inequalities in one variable, and that's how you graph them on a number line, which means that you're graphing the numbers that make the inequality true. Let me know if you have any questions. Woman with a and face chokes night and says, oh, what a lovely day. It's tight rope funeral bends to excite